In this video, we'll study the face proportions in front view and learn how to sketch a face with Loomis method. Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Cordia and this is the first lesson of my tutorial series, how to draw portraits in any angle. In this series, I'm going to demystify complicated faces into simple structures and also we learn how to draw different faces from photo or design characters from imagination. Today's lesson is so basic but so important. First, I'm gonna find the average measurements of uh, a face with studying this photo and after that, I show you how to sketch a face with this information. So, let's begin! First of all, I define the height of the head with this vertical line which divides the face in two symmetrical parts. As you can see, the eyes are exactly in the middle of the head, which is an easy proportion to remember. Second thing to know is that the distance between chin to the base of the nose is almost the same with the distance from nose to eyebrows and eyebrows to hairline. These are the thirds of the face that is so important to know them because they help us to draw other features much easier. Now if I split this bottom third into three equal parts, I can easily find the lip line. Also half of this distance is where the bottom of lips usually is. A common mistake that beginners do and unfortunately has been taught in many YouTube tutorials is placing the nose line in the middle of the eye line to the chin line, which is not so accurate because the distance between chin to nose should be same with nose to eyebrows, not nose to eyes. Otherwise, nose looks longer. Another mistake is drawing the mouse half of the distance uh, from nose to chin, which makes the chin shorter because it should be one third of this section and that's the bottom of lips that is halfway down of it. And this proportion might work for stylized drawing like anime that a tiny line can express the nose or lips, but for realistic portraits, don't do that. Otherwise, you end up drawing something like this. <laughs> Moving on to the ears, the placement of the ears is usually from the eyebrow line to the nose line. It can be a little higher or lower, smaller or even bigger than this distance. For example, older people have bigger ears because ears and nose keep growing our whole life, but generally ears are in the middle section of the face. Next, we have the eyes. The distance between them is about the width of one eye and that's the distance of the nose wings from each other. So they usually line up with the tear ducts. Also, if we draw a line from iris uh, to the lip line, we can find the corner of the mouse. And please keep in mind that these measurements are average and apply in general, which means people are different and this is our job to distinguish and draw those unique characteristics or those subtle differences based on this measuring. So don't expect that every face must follow a certain structure because it's all approximate. Now let me show you something. If we take an eye as the unit of measuring the head, its height will be about seven eyes, meaning that every third is about two eyes. Also, head is about five eyes wide if we consider the ears. I know, he looks like a spider now. <laughs> but using the eyes as measuring unit is so helpful and we'll use this a lot. So it's better to learn it right now because it's not that hard. The measurements so far were so easy and you may say, Okay, but how should I draw a face? Where should I begin? Well, for doing that, we need something to start our drawing with. Something that doesn't change in different perspectives. Because we don't only draw a face from front view, uh, what if you want to draw a character from different angle? You know that the cranium is almost like a ball, so a sphere is the best thing, because in any angle it's a circle. But how much is the circle? In front view, the center of the circle is right between the eyebrows and its diameter is from the top of the head to the bottom of the lips, just about six eyes. Also, we crop out its sides because the head is not a perfect sphere and if you ignore the jaw, it's like a ball with its sides chopped up. No way we just don't use a smaller circle, something like this. Well, that's a nice one and it's being used by many artists, but it doesn't perfectly apply on the side profile. Also, the head is flat on sides. Not round, so if you want to draw head more naturally, you should understand this form. And the circle in Loomis method shows us the exact place of the ears, which is really smart. And I think this is the best method of drawing the head. But it's really up to you. This is just my personal opinion. You can choose any method that you are more comfortable with. 
Now this looks a little complicated, especially for those who hate math, but don't worry, I'll make it easy while sketching. But before that, let's apply these guidelines on some different faces. See? It works with almost any face, no matter what's the gender or the race. Uh, and you might see some little differences such as the form of the job, but you can't deny that these rules are generally true. Now let's see how to sketch a face with this method. I picked this photo and I use color pencil for drawing the guidelines so you can understand it better. I start with drawing a circle. We always start with circle for any angle. And I divide the circle into four parts with these vertical and horizontal lines. Now I split this vertical diameter into six equal units that each unit has the width of an eye. And I take one of these units and bring it down to find the chin line. Do you remember that the head is almost seven eyes high? Now I can easily find the nose line and hairline with these units. And if I divide this whole vertical line in half, I'll have the eye line. And by dividing this distance into three parts, I find the place of mouse, which is bottom is about here on the circle. It's time to draw the face contour or outline. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the head is not a perfect sphere and it's kind of chopped off from the sides if you ignore the job. Considering the ears, the width of the head from front view is about five to six eyes depending on the model. So I crop the sides of the circle with drawing these lines from these points and taper them down as I draw the job. Women tend to have softer jaw while it's more angular in male faces. We'll talk about the differences between male and female face in lesson two, so if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do it right now to not miss the next lesson. It's time to add the features, uh, start with the eyes. You know that the eyes are as one eye apart from each other, so if I take one of the units which happens to have the same size and bring it down on the eye line, I can easily find the placement of the eyes. I draw the eyes and eyebrows based on model, and their proportions from their guidelines. See, uh, eye is a little lower than the eye line here. In next lesson, I show you what to do if you want to draw symmetrical eyes when you're drawing a character from imagination. And I draw the nose by drawing two lines from the tear ducts to the nose line. So it shows me where I can draw the nose wings and nostrils. And I do the same for lips. I can find the corner of the mouse by bringing down these lines to the lip line. And I connect these points to draw the lips which its bottom is about here. Just shade it quickly. So let's draw the ears. Here they are a little higher than eyebrow line, but it's not that obvious. And also I sketch her earrings quickly. Then I draw her neck. That's about three eyes wide for this model. See how we can use the eyes for measuring literally every part of the face. So just learn it. And now I draw the hair. You see that here there's a little gap. Uh, it's because hair has volume and it doesn't stick to the head. Even if it is Draco Malfoy's hair, there is still a gap that you need to consider while drawing. Unless the model has no hair, so you don't have to draw anything. And finally, I do some hatching for shadings and adjust my drawing because we can't completely see what we've missed in the process. So don't expect to do everything perfectly in every step uh, and check your drawing once again. But before we finish this lesson, I've got some practice for you that help you memorize these proportions better. First, find six photographs of different faces in front view, then try to draw the guidelines under photos using an app just the way I did and see how these rules apply on different faces. Then draw those portraits using 
the guidelines you've learned. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember that the aim of this practice is studying and memorizing the proportions. So there is no need to feel guilty about using the guidelines. Uh, I assure you that after a while you don't even need them. And finally, if you use this tutorial, I'll be happy to see your work or maybe you have any question you can contact me on Instagram. Then we're ready to move on to the next lesson, which we draw and compare a male and female face and talk about the differences you should know. I hope that's been useful for you. However, it's not a perfect video, but I really appreciate if you support my channel and tell me how I can make better tutorials because I really enjoy sharing my experience about art and I want to do it better. So I need your advice. And I hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye.